Well, my name is Ron Smith, and I am so thankful that you are all here, and you are ready to celebrate Christmas with us. And um, tonight is just a, a great night of celebration, uh, a great night to remember uh, truly what Christmas is, is all about. And, um, and so before, though, we go on any further, uh, I would love to pray for us in, in these next few moments. Lord God, we do come before you. We are so thankful for you. We are so thankful that you have come. And Lord God, we also, though, know that Christmas is hard for many. Uh, that there are those that are here that uh, life has just not gone the way that they had hoped. Uh, there are loved ones that are no longer with them. Uh, Lord, there are those that have been struggling uh, financially financially. And Lord, I just pray that tonight you will meet us all here. Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place. Uh, take over. Uh, penetrate our hearts. Encourage us where we need to be encouraged. And Lord, let us live our lives all out for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, uh, I, I, I love Christmas, and uh, naturally, uh, just kind of within me, I'm a giver. So I want to start off tonight by giving you something, especially all you wonderful kids, right? You guys are all here like, oh, we got the service going on. So all of you get to have a candy cane. Is that exciting? Yeah, everybody, everybody. I think I have enough candy canes for everybody. So ushers, come on down, pass those baskets. Don't put money in the basket, okay? Take, this is like the one time in church, take the basket. You know what I mean? Like take, take the candy canes, Okay. Now, I, I didn't look at the package. I don't know, you know, the allergies. My uh, nephew is allergic to pretty much any food that, that, uh, that there is out there. Uh, I did not look at the package. Uh, so, parents, you, you may need to hold back your kids. But, parents, I want to encourage you to take one, right? I mean, there's nothing bad. Like in church, there's something about the message, something about getting a little something in your mouth and kind of. And here's the ch- hey, Kids, are you ready for the challenge? You ready for the challenge? Here's the challenge. The challenge is... For you to finish your candy cane before I stop speaking. You think you can do that? Well, that's easy. Well, you don't know. You don't know how short I may be tonight. Although, if you do know me, you know that it may be a little bit longer than, uh, than, than what it is. So, but there's a little something about candy canes that you also need to know about. There is something, I guess you could say, symbolic. Or maybe we can look at a candy cane and uh, see some things of the Christmas story in a candy cane. All right. So uh, you can see that they're usually white and red. The white can, can stand for, all right, kind of the purity of Christ, uh, the purity of God. The red, obviously the blood of Jesus. And then you see that it is crooked, so you can have like a J for Jesus. What are you guys laughing at? Or it's like a shepherd's staff, and you use it to bring in the lost sheep. See? Anyway, that's, that's, just, that's just bonus. And now I'm done. Amen. No. So I have some other gifts that, that I want to show you. Um, so I, some other gifts. So, so these are some, some other gifts that I've received uh, through, through the years. And I uh, just want to... Oh. Yeah. Hey, anybody ever seen one of these before? Like kids below 10 or anything? So, um, so, so these, these are, are, were all at one time uh, gifts that, that were given at, at, at some point uh, to us. And, and this, this TV is actually very special uh, to me. Uh, this was one of the first things that Michelle and I purchased together. You remember that, babe? This was like, you don't remember that. Okay, that just shows how memorable this TV is for me and not for Michelle, which may be a bad thing. Anyway, so, so but the, this TV, like three weeks ago, broke. <laughs> now it needs to be replaced. The 72 inch is coming. No, it, it's very sad. And uh, it, it just kind of, it, it broke. Just one, one day, it, it broke. And, uh, you know, I have like two computers that have now broken down. 
and other electronic toys. And can I just say this? This is my pet peeve this Christmas. Here's my pet peeve. Are you guys ready? My pet peeve. The personal performance protection plans. You want that TV? Well, I got a protection plan for you. For $300, you can have that thing insured for the next two years. What, like, what happened to making a quality product that I don't need to buy a protection plan? Are you guys with me on that? All right, almost any electronic thing. I bought a $39.99 karaoke machine yesterday, and I was offered, hey, there's a $9.99 protection plan on your karaoke machine. That is just ridiculous. All right, so that's just kind of one of my pet peeves. So, um, but, but it's not just electronics. Um, my, my dad's actually here. And this is actually his. So, well, I mean, but he gave it to me. Remember, you gave it to me. So, it's, you know, a little worn out. That's what happens with couches. And this is my dog, Smitty. Remember, Smitty? So, he ate, he ate that. And, uh, and then I bought my kids, obviously, some toys. And this, at one time, was like the stroller of the year, you know, and... It was the deal, and, and no more, no more. Not even, not safe for the baby. And uh, very, very sad stuff. And, and what, what we need to realize, right, is, is everything has an end. Everything that we can get, that we can buy, that we can, has, has an end. I mean, think about it. Uh, dreams, even, have an end. Uh, maybe you're like me and like you get these big birthday dinners and you look forward to it and you look forward to it and you look forward to it and then it's over. That stinks. And some of you kids, you're like, Christmas is here, it's coming, it's tomorrow, it's, or it's the next day, it's the two days, whatever you celebrate Christmas, like it's here. And then it'll be the 26th and I'll be gone. And, and you know what, the reality is even life itself, Right? comes to an end. About a couple weeks ago, I get a phone call from my wonderful stepmother, Cindy, and she's like, hey, your dad, your dad went to the doctor today, and they rushed him by ambulance to the hospital. No. Your dad says nothing's wrong. No. Okay. No problem. Sure. So they look at my dad. I call Cindy back. Hey, what's, what's going on with my dad? Well, they're, they're going to They're thinking about putting a pacemaker in his heart. What? I called back an hour later. There is going to be an emergency surgery tonight to have his pacemaker put into your dad. The doctors were saying, right, they were surprised that he had not already died in his sleep. A heart has a lifetime. Everything comes to an end. Now you were created for eternity. So though your body may die, you will live on for eternity. See, the problem that the world has is that there's nothing that this world has to offer that's going to last. But the one thing that Jesus offers to you is an eternal kingdom of endless joy, of endless peace, and endless love. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says this, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. God has set eternity in your heart. That's why you want more. That's why we long to to leave something behind. That's why we want to live for something significant. Because God has placed in our hearts something that that is going to last. Something that will go on and on and on. And the world cannot offer us anything. And Jesus offers us an eternal kingdom of endless peace and endless love and endless joy. Where are you going? Where will you spend eternity? The prophet Isaiah said this of Jesus. 
in Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. It speaks of this child coming. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. No end. You do not need a protection plan with Jesus. There is no end. No nation will conquer. No sickness will overcome. There is no end with Jesus. Imagine, imagine this with me. We see this in Luke 1, 26. Imagine this, this young woman who's engaged to be married. And, and she's ready for a new beginning. She's ready for a new life. She's ready for a new start. She's ready for new relationships. She's ready for a new family. And then, and then in one night, an angel appears. And everything changes. And this angel says, Mary, you are highly favored. God is with you. Let's look what it says in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 30. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. His kingdom will never end. Before this night, all the world knew was end. Nations rose and nations, nations fell. Israel once was the dominant nation. Now they were under Rome rule. Death reigned. Life ended. Houses destroyed, families torn apart, all these things exactly that we experience now. But this angel says to Mary, your son Jesus, he will rule and his kingdom will have no end. No end. No end. It's, it's hard for us to grasp hold of something being endless. Some, sometimes it seems that things last a long time. For example, uh, when you're really busy and you're on your way to go somewhere and you are stopped at a red light and you say, this is taking it eternity for it to turn green. You ever been there? This is endless. I'm just sitting at this light. You are waiting, right, for your family to get ready to come to church. <laughs> it is endless. You're sitting in the car, and it's endless, or so it, so it seems. This is what I've come to. Waiting in general seems endless. You with me? Waiting for a phone call, waiting for the doctor's appointment, waiting in general seems endless, all right? But, but there's other things, I think, that give a much better picture of eternity or things being endless. When you look up at the sky at night and you see these stars and then you see galaxies and, and then you look and there's, there's no end to what you can see. It, it's, it's endless. Or, or you're looking out at the ocean. Have you ever done this? You're looking at the out ocean, you're looking at the horizon, and all you see is water. And it just seems endless, like it lasts for eternity, like there is no end. And, and you know what else is, and this is, this is true, this doesn't end, is relationships. You realize that relationships are eternal. See, you are eternal. 
you will last past death. Your body will die, your soul will live on, and where you go is your decision that you need to make. But the relationships that you have will be there. Relationships are eternal. That's why it's so significant that we pour our time and invest in one another. Because relationships are eternal. And Jesus has come, and his kingdom is endless. Endless joy, endless peace, and endless love. Are you going? Are you going to be there? Have you, have you made that decision to put your faith in Jesus? Let me, let me just read with you Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 to 4, because maybe you're like, I don't know about this whole eternal 